I stated in our last video we would skip one week in this Lincoln Log Erector Set Lego-like antenna configuration deployment mini-series where we take individual antenna components and we deploy them in small form factor situations. And that's what I'm doing here, backyard portable in the HOA. That would be one particular application. Perhaps you're going a trip uh, to the in-laws and you don't wanna freak your mother-in-law out by putting a 25 foot SS25 up in the backyard. This antenna we're talking about today is six feet tall at its highest point. And I'm thinking it's less than 10 feet wide in configuration. So it's a little bit inconspicuous. Maybe you're going on a trip and you're just trying to stay very small form factor. And I have an antenna today that worked surprisingly well. The reason I chose to just pick right up again on it this week is because we've lost some connectivity in HF this last week. Here on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, the bands were horrific. And coming right up to that last week, the bands were terrible. So I'm gonna show you some band conditions as they were when I was making contacts on 20 meters with this particular setup. I'm always after 20 meters because 20 meters is the easiest thing to demonstrate in amateur radio. I have the, the broadest amount of time throughout the day in which to make contact. So it's always the easiest band to demonstrate. And then I'll take other modes and try to demonstrate other bands. But I started with this thinking 20 meters. I ended up tuning it from 10 through 40. I did play a little bit on 40 on FT8 and nope, it's not a 40 meter antenna, but 10 through 20 for sure. And I'm thinking that it's gonna work pretty well digital on 30. So what does this thing look like? What exactly is it? Well, again, the main feature of this would be the multi-configuration coil. This is a coil antenna. You tune with the coil. And when we get towards the end of this series, I'm actually gonna put some competitive equipment in some of the components in some of the configurations to show you that you can use some of the equipment that you already own if it's not necessarily chameleon. No harm, no foul by simply what you need to come up with a configuration I'm demonstrating it, you can deploy some competitive gear in there and it will still work. But what's the main feature of this? Well, we're not going to use a radio puck, but you could put a radio puck on the bottom in case you have any difficulty with SWR. We're starting with the a hub that comes with the tactical delta loop. Of course, you can buy that as an individual hub. We're going to use two SS58s. These are 58 inch long telescoping whips. So that's why I say 58 inches long times two, we're under 10 feet wide in this particular installation. We're going to use the ground spike and then we're gonna use two of these single extensions. So when I deploy this, I'm six feet off the ground. So I have a six feet high and a 10 feet wide antenna. And we're just gonna call this the T antenna, the coil tuned T antenna. And the interesting thing is once I deploy these at full length, I'm tuning using my coil. Now, I can't remember what band, hopefully I pick it up when I do um, a review of my video later. I know on 10 meters, this was completely collapsed and I had to start collapsing both whips. I believe the same was true on 12 and it was either 15 or 17. I think 15 might've been the first band that I had to start using my coil. And then of course, you know, 17, the same 20, 40. So this is where we're doing the tuning on this particular antenna. It works like a combination dipole slash vertical. I know that sounds weird, but that's what I found in my experience. Let's go ahead and get it set up backyard portable and we'll demonstrate what we can do in some really bad band conditions. The ground spike and the two single extensions are already installed. I did put the radial puck on, but I didn't use it. Again, I have very uh, cooperative ground here in Tampa Bay where I am. I never have any issues with SWR. I'm spoiled a bit. So I don't have the ground spike pushed all the way into the ground. I can pick up a couple of more inches in uh, height. I should say reducing height if I just push that in a little bit further. And I did by the time I was done with my installation the second time, which is what I used for all of the contacts made, I was right at six feet tall. And just for fun, I am in laying a video here of me doing a 
configuration in my shack. My shack is six feet wide. My ceiling is eight feet high. So you can see here, I'm putting the entire antenna together in my shack with the exception of extending the two telescoping whips. They stay collapsed. And then I just carry it on outside and do my second deployment for all of the testing that I'm demonstrating to you today. Let me tell you where the rest of the video is going while we finish setting up the antenna. As soon as I complete the setup and give you an SWR reading, we're going to make two contacts. One is uh, midday, I pick up two POTA operators and they are regularly giving out three, three signal reports, fours, fives, a couple of fives, I got a five, three. So if they're beginning a three, three report, they're beginning the report with three and a four, they're saying the readability, their ability to hear you and understand you on a scale of one to five. If they were giving out reports of three and four readability and I got a five, I'm okay with that. I'm pretty happy with that. And then by the evening, the band conditions really had not improved, yet I was still able to make a POTO contact and the signal report from that operator was just a little bit better. When we're done with those two particular uh, illustrations of how this works on single sideband because I prefer single sideband. We'll of course do some digital contacts on FT8. I'll show you my PSK reporter and then we'll go ahead and we'll do some whisper maps. Apparently um, I appear pleased with myself. Uh, I'm doing my final adjustment of the coil here and then I'm going to lock it down with the screw and I'm going to show you here what my SWR reading is. It must be so great, I'm going to take a picture of it. And here it is, it's 1.2 to 1. That is our tuned T antenna at 1.2 to 1. Let's go operate. Kilo Delta 4, Bravo, Mike Golf. Kilo Delta 4, station repeat, repeat. Kilo Delta 4, Bravo, Mike Golf. Bravo Mike Golf. Bravo Mike Golf. QSL. Roger, Roger. You're 5353, Tampa, Florida. You're 53 back, sir. It's US 6462. 535353 both ways. QSL. QSL. I have a second operator. Please stand by. Uh, Kilo Delta 4, Bravo Mike uh, Q, uh, Golf. You're 5-3 both ways. Uh, have a blast, friends. 73. 73, so thank you for hunting us down. QSO. We'll come back to that QSO in a couple of minutes because I want to talk a little bit about the signal reports I was getting as well as that uh, solar index. I'm going to look specifically at the A and K part of the index. We need to break some paradigms about this dipole. We see a traditional dipole, and that's what you thought when I set it up showing you in the video. So we expect one of these sides to be positive and one of these sides to be negative. That's what we think we're going to see in a dipole. So here is my center conductor. Watch my continuity reading. I have my multimeter set to continuity. So here is my positive side. I do have continuity. Let's look at the negative side. I've got continuity. <laughs> what on earth is going on here with this dipole? Well, it's a little bit different than what you would think. And I guess the best way to say this to you is that everything below the SO239 connector is part of the grounding side of this dipole antenna and everything above the SO239 is part of the positive side of this antenna. So perhaps that might explain just a little bit when I said earlier that this was acting a little bit as much like a, um, a vertical as it was a dipole because basically you have a signal that's starting right here while this is in the vertical position deployed and the signal is going to be radiating. Whoop, my multimeter went off. Let's turn it back on again. What you have here is with my center conductor, I've got radiation immediately going on from, from ground to sky from here up and it continues to the top of the coil and then it continues to the hub. And then all of a sudden I have these two parts that are going horizontal. So I have, uh, I mean, I, do, I, do I have a very short vertical with a huge capacitance hat? Or just do I have a short vertical and then I've got a very large flat antenna 
at the top of this. So it is definitely not a traditional dipole, but I guess a dipole can be defined in a number of different ways. And again, for this particular example and discussion, everything below my SO239 is part of my negative side of the dipole and everything above as part of the positive side of the dipole. So I wanted to explain this so you really understood what we're doing here with this antenna. Let's take a look at the second QSO. And I do have a little bit of improvement in the A index here, but I'm still really not to the great side uh, of propagation. Um, back on that first QSO, remember they I said that they were getting three threes and four fours to a lot of other people trying to activate them in the park, and I got a five three. Well, they still had to ask me twice to clarify my uh, my call sign. So I know when I'm doing POTA activations, a lot of times I have other noise around me. Maybe I have the wind blowing in my ear as I had in a recent activation, and I don't hear quite as good as I did in my younger days. So uh, I do believe them in what they gave me for my five, my first part of the signal report, the readability, because I heard them repeatedly start other signal reports with a three and a four. Here, this next QSO actually goes a good bit better. It was several hours later into the evening. Kilo, Delta 4, Bravo, Mike, Golf. Uh, yeah, it's Bob here in Tampa, Florida. You're coming in 5757 this evening. Over. Thanks. You have a blast, friend. 73. You may see me from time to time in videos wearing such stylish hats. I've been battling the Florida sun for many, many years, and it finally won a battle, and I need to do some, uh, some more creative activity in protecting my skin. So now not only do I attract my wife because I'm a ham radio operator, now I have stylish clothing to go along with it. I did tune up this antenna with the coil on 10 through 40. And I just want to say that it was very easy to achieve a favorable SWR, easily under 2 to 1, and usually closer to 1.2 to 1 on all of those bands that I mentioned. But I do think that you want to take into account the possibility of using the radio puck and um, a wire. Now, it's not going to be a ground radio, right? It's going to be a raised counterpoise. And I only suggest that because now that you understand what this antenna really is, I did miss an opportunity to make it as efficient as possible because I had a longer radiator, a longer positive side of my antenna than I did a negative side of my antenna. So if you put this at the bottom of the coil and you use a wire, you're using a counterpoise and a counterpoise is oftentimes tuned. So if you get a reasonable length of wire there, it could impact how you're tuning the coil, and then you can end up with a more efficient radiator, a more efficient antenna system. So I would suggest using the puck, even though I didn't remember I'm spoiled with my soil here in Florida. So let's go ahead and take a look at um, a couple of whisper maps, because I want to explain directionality here, and then I'll show you what I can do on FT8. Here's a 12 hour whisper map on 20 meters. I started it late in the day. I don't know, seven o'clock maybe in the evening. And I ran it to about uh, seven or eight o'clock the next morning. And I picked up what I felt was sufficient information to let me interpret how this antenna was performing and quite frankly, pretty good. Now, whisper is an indicator mode from my perspective. It's something that I can use to compare two antennas side by side running two simultaneous whisper transmitters. In this case, I was really looking for directionality. Remember our paradigm that this is a dipole with a left side and a right side radiator, and dipoles can be um, a directional broadside to the element. So for all of the pictures that I took and the video that I shot, I oriented these uh, the tips of the two radiators east to west thinking that, uh, you know, that was the best way to show this to you in my backyard with the surrounding vegetation and homes around me. But when I went to actually um, activate it, I oriented it north to south. And in doing so, I felt like I would pick up Florida to the west coast and Florida to Europe. I was thinking, looking at it, 
It looks like a dipole to me. I wonder if it has directionality. So if you take a look at my second whisper map here, don't pay much attention to what's south of me, which would really be one tip of the antenna, because I don't ever get a lot of activity south of me. I guess that's just because there aren't a lot of people, a lot of ham radio operators doing anything there south of me. This is typical of any one of my activations, whether I'm doing single sideband FT8 or whisper. But look to the north of me. There is no way this antenna is directional because directly north of that one tip of that SS58 is just slammed full of contacts and it really goes not just north of me, but west of me and east of me. So we really don't have a directional antenna here. It's really not acting like a dipole giving you, um, you know, broadside to the antenna. It's acting more like a, uh, an omnidirectional antenna here. It's, it's going everywhere. So I was happy to find that out here through the whisper operations. FT8 on 20 meters was an absolute breeze. 15 minutes into this, I was able to make several contacts with no problem whatsoever. And PSK Reporter indicates that I am being heard quite well in the US and over into Europe. Despite what PSK Reporter says on 40 meters, it does look like I'm being heard pretty well. I was only able to eke out one contact. Now, remember band conditions. Um, so I really don't know if this is good antenna on 40 meters or not. I have high confidence in it in 10 through 20, likely 30, 40. I'm just not sure the band conditions weren't great. I really didn't have success with uh, FT8 here on 40. So I would call it questionable on 40, but let's go ahead and look at my final thoughts and recommendations. So what we have in this T antenna, we're not gonna call it a dipole because it will confuse people. It looks like a traditional dipole, but it's not. It is still a dipole by definition, but let's not get confused over what that top radiator is doing. Definitely 10 through 20 meters, no problem operating on those particular bands. I have a suspicion it's gonna be pretty good on 30, although to be fair, I didn't do much testing there. 40 meters, I was able to eke out a contact um, on FT8, so I'm just giving it a very mediocre rating on 40 meters. Again, the band conditions weren't that great. Maybe that impacted the performance. For um, output, 200 watts to 500 watts, 200 digital, 500 single sideband. If only I had a 500 watt transceiver. It seems to me there was something introduced at Hamvention this year. I can always dream, can't I? Well, let's talk about portability, stealth, and setup. I've rated them all high. This is absolutely a portable antenna system. The components are very easy to pack away in a small case and take them with you to the in-laws house on vacation. Uh, if you're traveling on business and you wanna be able to set up something small on a, a little piece of grass at the hotel, easily portable um, for travel, easily portable for POTA if you go into a particular location where you're actually confined in space. And again, remember that's what I'm doing here with all of these components, showing you how to operate in a challenged uh, small footprint environment. Stealth, I think this is a stealth antenna. You could prop this thing up behind a tree and it would completely disappear. Setup, again, quite easy. It's a matter of um, a five minute setup here and you're ready to go. So my final thoughts on this antenna configuration was, wow, this performed far better than I had ever anticipated. And I've got some plans for this configuration to show you in the future. Haven't set it up yet, but you might be surprised here in a couple of weeks. Hope you found this useful and a little bit fun. I like tinkering with all of these antenna setups and we have a lot more to come. Talk to you soon, friend, 73.